Hello everyone, today on the Hadron Collider Physics Series I'm going to explain String Theory and M Theory. Hello everyone, as promised in the intro I'm going to do my very best to explain M Theory or, or String Theory an incredible theory that's helping us really put together the bits and pieces of physics and help us understand the underlying causation of reality. So um, M-theory is a concept that unifies quantum physics and relativity and um, sometimes known as the super string theory. Now this is something Einstein worked his entire life um, to try and achieve and unfortunately wasn't able to and um, M-theory has really come in and a lot of people are feeling that super string theory and M-theory is, is an incredible um, a, a credible way of looking at um, how these all these different theories come together. So it was created by um, um, Edward Witten in the University of Southern California in 1995. So it's really recent. I mean, most physics, a lot of our physics come from 1905 from Einstein's four great papers. Um, so it's relatively new M theory and helps us. So. I'm going to, I guess to get an understanding of this, I have like my particle physics video, which will help you get that understanding, my quantum physics video. But this I think is my most interesting video because I think this concept is crazy cool. And um, I'm gonna start with the fact that M theory believes there's 11 dimensions. Crazy, right? 11 dimensions is like, you know, 3D movies were crazy enough and now you're telling me there's 11? Well, we have like a forward and back, up and down, left and right, and time, so four dimensions, right? But there's 11. Now, I love this because a lot of um, spirituality and a lot of um, mysticism comes from the fact we can't observe through our five senses everything around us. Now, string theory says, yeah, not only can we not observe everything in our five senses, there's a lot more out there. There's another, you know, seven dimensions going on. And, um, you know, in the same way I can't hear a dog whistle, doesn't mean the, the, the whistle isn't making a noise. Um, and this is sort of the concept of um, the extra dimensions. Now, um, these dimensions are um, in us and within us as well, so I can't really go to these dimensions. Some of these dimensions will be parallel with us, it's just that we can't perceive them. So um, these dimensions allow us to um, have some of the challenges explained that are going on um, within the universe and one of those is that gravity is way too weak so when we talk about the force carriers around in particle physics gravity has always been misunderstood because gravity is too weak like it just doesn't make sense the universe is expanding like gravity can't even keep the universe together it should be much stronger now we think gravity is strong because we're on a, on a planet but it takes an entire planet to hold me to the ground that's, that's a weak force. Like, think about that. Think about the photoelectric effect. I mean, the sun, if the, the sun d disintegrates things and all, all the gravity that the Earth creates can do is just keep me here and I can still jump off the ground. So it's quite weak. Now, scientists have never quite grasped that on why a force carrier like gravity could be so weak. Now, string theory helps us understand that if gravity actually exists in another dimension, and it's seeping into our dimension. It's not really supposed to be here, but it's like a, a, through a, it's it's seeping through a membrane. That would explain why gravity is so weak, and and it's a great explanation. You know, in the same way that you could turn on a hose, but if you put like a um, a, a sieve in front of that hose, at the end of the sieve it would be coming out really weakly and just dripping, even though the force is quite strong. And and you could say that to the person on the other side of the sieve, I'm shooting a hose. If they couldn't see the hose, they wouldn't believe you. So um, gravity is leaking through into our reality from via another membrane or another dimension. Now, I'm going to get onto those membranes because those membranes is part of string theory are really cool. So picture this if you will. We've got these dimensions and we have this universe and universes as we know it exist on membranes. So they're floating through space on this giant membrane and they exist independently of each other and then one day, a long long time ago, and the universe far far away, actually our universe, Two membranes touched and it created an explosion in which those two membranes interacted and that was the Big Bang. Now scientists have never been able to explain what happened before the Big Bang because time was created in the Big Bang. And if time was created, nothing could have happened before the Big Bang because everything was eternal and if everything's eternal, how could there be a beginning and end? So the membranes really, really help with that and string theory is, um, is something that really drives the membrane theory forward.
Now, what's super interesting about this, and I want to go crazy spiritual on you now, is that we have always heard, especially particularly from Jesus, about this 11 dimensions. Now, Jesus will quite often talk about the kingdom of God being here right now, within us and without us. And everywhere we look around, both inside and outside. And people used to go, yeah, you know, you're a crazy Jewish radical. We don't get half the things you're saying. And then you'd have other holy men like, you know, the Buddha saying that, you know, there's an eternal reality and there's, 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 there's realms of reality we can't understand. I find it really interesting that now our smartest minds are saying, absolutely, there's multiple dimensions we can't understand and um, we can't ever get to or perceive. Yet we had people saying this thousands of years ago. What's really cool about that is that if you could imagine the concept of if there is a, and I don't, I hate using this word because it's so conceptualized, but imagine there is an energy or a God or something that's our divine spark. Now, when we're on Earth, in the same way gravity weakly interacts with Earth, imagine if there was a dimension, let's call it the 11th dimension, in which it was a realm of pure love. Let's say it's heaven. We'll call it's tough, we shouldn't call it heaven because once again it brings in to ideas of clouds and you know, dudes with beards, you know, shooting laser beams out of their hands. But you know, let's let's just try and we'll call it like the eleventh dimension of love. Now, in the same way, gravity can only weakly interact with our existence. Imagine if there was a dimension of love that could only weakly interact with our dimension, where we could see the effects. You know, we could feel love, we could understand love, we could see it in the people around us and the connections we have but it was weak, it wasn't the only force, we had lots of other forces going on. And the same way gravity works, you know, we know that gravity's here, and we can see it interact, but it doesn't crush us to the ground so we can get on with our lives. Now this is really interesting as well, because as most religions talk about there being a heaven, you know, outside of our physical understanding there's a heaven, and God's grace, or God's love, or, you know, the, um, the divineness of God leaks through, and is manifested in us. Now, what I believe is that if that's true, that perhaps the matter of our universe, the atoms and the particles, when they come into contact with this divine grace or love, in the same way when they come to gravity, they sort of combine and come together, perhaps that's what generates life. Perhaps the interaction of matter, atoms, and this divine grace, whatever you want to call it, from this dimension, somehow bring together life. And that's why life always wants to get back to love. That's why all cultures hold love as the ultimate value. Jesus and Buddha would always talk about nirvana in heaven, you know, and this could be that dimension they were trying to get to. And perhaps when our atoms disappear, perhaps the divine grace of love from that dimension goes back to that dimension. And maybe that's what they were talking about. One of the other great concepts of this is that in order to understand gravity, you know, we have to do experiments and we use heavy objects. In order to understand love, we need a brain. And I believe the brain is a receptor for this love and um, it allows us to keep in tune with it. And we've evolved a brain for a very particular reason and we're, we're quite high up on the evolutionary chain. What I think is happening is that evolution or the divine grace or love that's generating life is trying to understand that. And it's developing mechanisms like the prefrontal cortex in order to understand better emotions and love and, and logic and starting to do things like meditate in order to, to leave this realm. So. Perhaps there's a membrane of consciousness, that's probably a better word than heaven. Maybe there's a membrane where consciousness is non-local. Quantum mechanics might agree with this, that it's non-local. And that membrane of consciousness is somehow leaking consciousness, like in the same way another dimension is leaking gravity into our world, it's leaking consciousness. And that's atoms, because what we are, we're atoms, and we're the exact same atoms that are in this computer or TV that you're watching, the exact same atoms that make up you, just switched around a little bit. Somehow, that um, are being interacted with the field of consciousness and that's manipulating those atoms in the same way the weak gravitational force in our world interacts with matter perhaps the consciousness is non-local existing on a plane or a membrane within M theory which is generating our consciousness and maybe that's sometimes why we pluck ideas out of the air maybe we are plucking ideas out of the air maybe very much we are plucking the non-local consciousness into our receiver our brain our evolutionary brain maybe that's what's happening I like it. I like it a lot, and I dig M theory. And I, I fundamentally believe that there's a there's a plane of consciousness within those eleven dimensions that's leaking consciousness into our world. We're absorbing it, divine love and grace, and it's being manifesting through us. But it's weak. It's like gravity. And one day we'll return to that source consciousness, and it'll be great, and we'll be unlimited consciousness. But until then. Let's do great things for each other. Let's look after the planet because maybe when we head back to the divine plane of consciousness, it will all make sense. 
There's some physics for you, there's M theory, and there's some crazy loony talk that might be true from me. Thank you and goodbye. I wore this suit to give you a very serious message. That message is that I have a Instagram account now with thousands of followers, I'd love you to join. So check me out at One Year Life Challenge on Instagram, I'd love to see you there. Heaps of photos of me topless or in a suit, and I'm happy to listen to your demands. Thank you and check me out on Instagram.